Today, we're going to discuss something we did this week that actually two other firms that I know of just did too. You know what that was? You got it. Push up challenges with tequila shots. Well, <laughs> that actually did happen. We may discuss that. And you're looking at the reigning champion right here. Oh, you but did you did not. <laughs> but you beat me. Oh, I never mind. I'll take the championship. I'm calling it that. But um, what did happen was a firm retreat. So beyond just shenanigans like tequila and push-ups, you know, why do we think that retreats are important to acuity? How do we do them? What has changed about our retreats over time? And is this something that your firm should consider? All of that here on Drink While You Think, the weekly happy hour conversation uh, between a couple of guys who drink tequila and do push-ups while building their accounting firm in really weird ways. I'm your host, Kenji, and the other host there is my main man, Matthew. Matthew, tell us who our sponsors are today. Well, yeah, first of all, yeah, yeah, Kenji did beat me in the head-to-head push-up challenge, but in the actual push-up challenge that didn't involve tequila shots, one of our sales guys beat him. So... There's no tequila involved. I think, once you, I think you, you get, still you beat me in that one, though. How many I did you get in the big one? You got you got like uh, 50. 30. You got like 50? Yeah. Okay, so our sales guy got 61 push-ups. But I, um, Good job, Tyler. We've got two sponsors today because we didn't get our act together. The beer is correct. So I am drinking a home brew by uh, one of my good friends, uh, his name Donnie Helms. So he's got a homebrew for us. It's he calls it the car, the Kama Citra IPA, and uh, I don't have the ABV on here, um, but uh, he brought brought this for, over for me when uh, I had COVID and I haven't had a chance to drink it. So I'm really looking forward to drinking it. So Donnie Helms, good dude. Uh, worked with him at Cherry Becker. Now he's a CFO over at uh, one of the Atlanta companies here in town. Uh, great, great, uh, great guy. So he gets the sponsorship for the episode and then Good job, Donnie. And then, um, you got, uh, a, you've got, what are you drinking? Check uh, this out. We're going I'll weird tell, today. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the sponsor, but you can, what are you drinking first? The cream oh. thickle. This is another one from Port Orleans brewing cream thickle. It is a creamsicle sour um, of orange and dairy free vanilla soft serve i mean it's an eight percenter what in the world is this thing this is a bizarre beer i like a little bit of craziness i like home brews so i like what we're doing today matthew who provided this to us oh uh, those beers were provided by elephant Elephant for all of your training needs. CPE certified, NAB, NASBA accredited. Elephant, Elephant for all of your training needs. Hopefully, we're going to get Elephant to actually do all. Uh, if we need some CPE for Acuity, kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll get Elephant to do that. We're going to have to talk her into that. So, thank you, Amanda, for the beers. Thank you, Donnie. Cheers, man. Cheers. Oh, that's weird. How's that one? Oh, it's nice. I like that. This was as a man. He was able to get the citrus in this one. I know you 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 tried that one a, a few times. So yeah, that's all good. Done. I get some things for him. This is very interesting. This is like um, there's just, there are particles floating in it. Um, it's like kind of like orange juice, but it's like you have to save one of those for me. So I've got a couple more. That's interesting. It's it is almost like a cream sickle, cream thickle. Awesome. You know what it means, Matthew, when it says thick? You know what that means? Thick. thick. No. We're going to talk about that off air. That's a different topic. That's probably not appropriate for this. Anyway, let's get into the episode. Matthew, why in the world do we do retreats? Why do we decide to do this? I mean, what, what's the deal? Why do we decide to do retreats? Yeah. Well, we it started with you and I going off and having crazy ideas places, right? And um, really like getting away, getting on whiteboards, getting on, um, you know, those uh, big, huge post-it boards and um, getting in a cabin and like post them up and just have crazy ideas. And then um, 
but when we got bigger, I mean, we would bring those post-its back and nobody understand them. So now we have to take people with us and now they understand like all the crazy stream of consciousness thought and, and stuff like that. Um, that that's kind of how it started, but I think uh, a big part of it's just team building and also getting everybody on the same page and out of the, out of the grind. Uh, it's a huge, uh, huge deal. Why do you, why do you, why do you want to do them? Um, I think for some of the same reasons you mentioned, it's, we find more and more as we grow that communicating can vision is, is more difficult. You just have to take more of the time to do it. And that group that we were with, so for us, what we're referring to here, this is our leadership team at Acuity. Um, I'll even show for all of you who decided to tune in to YouTube, you get a bonus here. You get to see some pictures in the background oh, um, yeah. of some of our team. Uh, but like, this is all of us together and this is our leadership team. And these are our primary, I mean, everybody here, every team member at Acuity, every employee, every, every contractor, it somehow rolls up to this team. And these are the team members who are pouring in, helping them kind of grow. Um, and so these, they're a huge communication vehicle for us uh, and a means for communicating what we're thinking of. So there's communication. I mean, other than and, you mentioned and for those that you can't see the picture, there's a, yeah. 11 people on our leadership team. 11 people on the team. So. People on the team. And I'll just keep scrolling through a few of these while we're, you know, kind of talking. But um, I think we found that that uh, also getting other ideas involved. I think for a while it felt like you and I are the only ones coming up with harebrained ideas. Maybe the harebrained part is definitely you and me. But like it kind of felt like there's a time when you you and I are coming up with the ideas, giving it to other people to execute. And I think also realizing that there's a lot of great thought process, especially people who are closer to many of the challenges that our clients face and we face that are not us, that we actually need to have in the room to be part of conversations. Um, and so, I mean, this team um, really did kind of a great job, a great job of, of kind of doing that with us. And, and then certainly the connection points. I think it's hard to kind of sketch out like an agenda that goes, well, I hope we all bond. Like, right, you may, maybe you'll drop in a couple fun things to do. And we'll talk about that. But like just the time together, especially as a remote firm, as a firm that has always kind of worked that way, being together, I think just makes a humongous difference. So um, for sure. So yeah. Just culturally. So yeah, I think it's, and, and I don't know, it brings for me a bunch of, a bunch of joy, a bunch of fun. Like you and I, you and I, you and I just like being together. We like being with our team. A core value of ours is being happy. It just brings us a lot of happiness. I think being being amongst the team. I think when you combine that, you you know, you and I have seen this a lot. I'm a huge believer in this um, doing fun, interesting things that kind of motivate you. For us, we do like the conferences. We do like being around our peer group. You and I like traveling together. Those environments give us lots of good ideas, gives us time to talk away from the office. And like, that's been very productive for us. So getting out of the day-to-day has been has been very helpful. So the retreats have been have been good. Uh, have been definitely been good. I think so. Hopefully, those some of those would be reasons why another firm would consider doing these. If you want to make some improvements in communication, in better idea exchange amongst team members, and just better camaraderie and bonding and having fun. I mean, man, retreats seem like yeah. it's pretty good. I mean, I mean, it, it it's one of those times when like you really can knock out big blockers. You can get people unblocked. You can fix big issues. You can get out of the grind. You can focus on the fifty thousand foot. It's it's a good time, and and two days is about the right amount of time for us. Yeah, before yeah. we get into that, I do I do want to kind of highlight that it was pretty cool. I did talk to I, mean, I did connect with uh, two other firms. My friend Juliet um, out of Canada. She was just mentioning that her firm they went and did an all hand, or uh, an offsite all the way down to the Dominican. How cool is that? They were down there for a week. We talked about that last night. Um, I happened to notice that. Uh, my friend Lo, who runs Outsource CFO over in South Africa, their team just did one as well too. So we're certainly seeing many other folks do it. We're not the only ones. And so I would say that, yeah, the idea of doing this is not unpopular or foreign to folks, but maybe I think what's always helpful is we'll talk about what we did. Like, how did we do it? Um, we'll talk, you know, you mentioned that we kind of went for two days, but Maybe if you would, Matthew, mention, mention kind of the structure of like how we kind of structured it. And we'll kind of deep dive into a few areas that way as people are thinking about if they want to do something like this or just comparing how they do it, 
gives them a little something to kind of bounce ideas off of the way we do it. So maybe structurally, how do we set it up? Yeah. I mean, um, the first day, what we did, we kind of called it, uh, <laughs> kind of for fun, we called it show and tell. So, but from a, from a practical standpoint, one of the issues we're having at our size is making sure everybody knows what everybody else is doing. So we started with a, a process we called updates. Uh, so everybody has their goals. Um, we have a goal sheet that we walk through and everybody did their goals and uh, um, walk through those things. So that took us, you know, 11 people that takes you an hour, hour and a half. But um, then after that, um, we, we kind of in the evening time, what we did, we did a, a literal show and tell for two of the people that have been working on really big projects that have been kind of siloed. Um, and we had this big TV. If you're seeing the pictures right now, if you, we had this big TV and everybody basically looking at the TV, DMAC um, uh, runs the product management for uh, our product uh, for one of the tools that we use, Verify Q. Uh, so he was showing everybody all the updates that had happened on uh, at Verify Q, including the um, the client dashboard, which is a kind of a single consolidated source of information um, that all the different departments have been asking to get access to. Um, so people were brainstorming about, you know, people just, just getting their minds going about all the ways they can use that information and all yeah. the different places we can do from the billing team, making sure that like if people exceed transaction volumes and because we price by tr like uh, in transaction tiers that they have a single place to go from, you know, the automating, the people that are focused on zaps and automating stuff, like imagining all the places they can push information to the sales team, like thinking about how you can scope and, and really get a handle on somebody's QuickBooks or zero file initially. But David did a great job of showing everybody what he's been working on. And he, I mean, it kind of gets a little siloed he, he's just kind of heads down, gets feedback, goes away, works for three months, six months, you know, and then uh, with the, team over there and then uh, comes back. Uh, so that was really cool. And it was then... a great, I, I was, so I'll introduce, I was skeptical. I, I was skeptical of this because, um, well, let me step back and just say again, day one, we did updates, right? And again, the point of that was we needed a level set, make sure everyone's on the same page before we entered day two, which is to be more about forward thinking and plans for the future. So that's kind of our idea for day one. And this is after dinner that, you know, we're doing these, these, the show and tell thing. And so I'm pretty focused on like, I want to make sure that people are in a good place. We've got time to kind of relax and hang out. I'm, I'm, you know, me, I'm Mr. Fun meter, right? I've always got to find like, there's got to be fun. So you can actually see in here, the compromise was if you're looking at the picture, yeah, we got a bunch of drinks. Everyone's having, we've got a cake. You can see down there, the lower left hand that Sammy brought, we did kind of drinks and dessert and like, Hey, let's gather around and actually look at something. Let's not talk about just, what's been happening. Let's also look at something. And Patty was doing the same thing here in this one where she jumps yeah. in. And so that, that's kind of where we got to. I thought people were going to be kind of tired after dinner, like, oh, this is kind of whatever. Let's move into fun time. I, we, I was so surprised and impressed. Our team was incredibly engaged in this process. So it just spoke to being able to see something tactically uh, or, and kind of put their arms around it and ask questions in a way that they don't normally get to do like they're face to face in a comfortable environment. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Oh yeah. I think we ran to like 10 30. We did. <laughs> Cause uh, between we did two sessions after dinner, um, which is show and tell and Patty did the second one. And that was on process street and showing how zaps were going to be used in our month in close process. And, and Lisa was chiming in on what, cause Lisa and Patty had like understood what was going on but they had to get like what was in their heads and what was uh, like, and, and some of the theory behind what they built. Um, I mean, this is no code, code like world here, um, but they had to get that out of their heads and show other people. And then other people also started to, to give feedback. So one of the things we've found in all this stuff is if we don't iterate, like it's, it's, it's worthless. Right. So, yeah. You get these 11 smart people together, all of a sudden you're iterating like crazy. It's great. Yeah, it, it is great. It is just great to be able to, to do that. And so that's kind of day one. I mean, day one was updates. Um, yeah, day, uh, day, two was about day, two. day two was like problems. So like yeah. things we're going to fix. So we, we, we kind of carved off the first half of the day was going to be all about our people. Um, 
you know, at Acuity, we, we do a lot of things great. Giving feedback ain't one of them. So we spent um, all of the, the morning kind of rolling out a process. Uh, thank God for our HR manager. Like uh, she's she's new to Acuity, but in the first her first three months, this is going to be a significant, one of the most significant ads that we've had from a, like a like institutionalizing HR and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, she 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 un, she helped us understand what real performance management looks like. And uh, she she kind of started the kind of the initial like buy-in, got everybody going. Um, and uh, so that was the first half of the day. And then the second half of the day, um, we we broke into a into kind of subgroups and we dealt with some of the issues, the lingering issues we have about around kind of setting expectations. Um, one of the groups is dealing with tax workflow issues. We have a new tax workflow system um, that we just acquired. Um, that's the tax group right there. Um, and, um, you know, just trying to just get some stuff unblocked, right. Just get completely unblocked and, 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 and make some progress on some bigger issues that are going on, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's a good way to think of it. I think as much as sometimes we want to jump into like, let's go and start attacking all the problems. I think the challenge and I'll maybe expand on this more later. If you talk about what things have changed, we've done this was we realized that um, we need to clear out the old stuff and kind of status updates first before we start getting into the challenges. We kind of didn't know where everyone's head was at and get them all on the same page before we jumped into problems and challenges and then kind of think future state and then think about um, ways to, again, make our discussions more actionable. Like let's come away here from here with some things. And so um, there's some takeaways, some things we need to change from this, how we did it this time that I think will make it us better and iterate for the next offsite. Um, but then, yeah, we go through that and we um, focus on some problems that we can all accomplish that we know that we believe at least as a firm are our biggest challenges that we need our best and brightest minds on that are going to be coming up in the short term. Like you want to be able to come back and tell Tell the rest of the team at Acuity, like, hey, we've really spent intentional time focusing on things that are going to matter to our clients and to us. Um, and that's a pretty heavy all-day process. And then the final day for us is it's pretty much a wrap-up. Like, right? Yeah, we're just recap, we're just, wrap, wrap up. Recap, yeah. wrap up. How did things go? Where clean we up the, from, like, clean up the house. Clean up that yeah, the house we're staying in. How you know? How did we? Um, and and kind of getting out. And I think. So that's the basic structure of the one we did just this week. Now, to step back a bit broader, as Matthew said, this is about a two-day process. Um, we at Acuity are running it quarterly, uh, except we're only doing three quarters. We kind of take a little bit of time around the holidays. We take that time off, kind of rolling into the beginning of the start of the year. So we do ours right now in March, June, and October. Um that's a good timing for us. The October one kind of gets us a little away from our own conference acuity con, which is our one all hands, every company, every team member and far enough away from the holidays and the busy season kind of time is kind of how we do this. We think three right now works for us. We um, logistically, we've only done them in Georgia, you know, Atlanta is our HQ. It's kind of our home. We're Atlanta proud for sure. Uh, ATL down as always, but um and it's easy for folks to get to. Most of our team are here for sure. And so you can get into Atlanta pretty easily. And we've done the resort kind of style, a great resort called Serenby, just south of town, which has been awesome. And this time we've kind of did, went back to the way that Matthew and I have done them as more kind of an Airbnbs, big, nice Airbnbs where we can all kind of live together. Um, so we've done both. We've kind of experienced both those. We'll probably, again, we'll talk about some changes we're making and the way we think about those going forward. Um, in some of those cases, you go out to dinner, you do um, all those things. Otherwise, you, you're cooking. And so maybe, Matthew, before we jump into things that we've changed over time, maybe talk about the unstructured time. Like, are you walked us through the structure to things we were doing? Oh, How yeah. do we think about, like, the unstructured time? Because that's not something that's an afterthought for us. Yeah, I mean, we wanted to create some time, you know, lots of time for like, well, whatever you want to call it, serendipitous interactions or whatever, just when, you know, stuff that people have to deal with that, that, that um, they just need this one or these three people to get together and they can fix a problem. 
So we did a lot around um, this time. We did a lot. We did all the meals in house. So I was breakfast cook. Lunch was kind of feed yourself whenever you wanted to feed it. Like it was lunch, meat, some real simple stuff. And then Kenji cooked on day one and I cooked on day two. And, um, you know, that time where you can kind of just everybody's help and everybody else, it turned into like short order cooks and side, you know, sous chefs and stuff like that. And people pitched in and, and what that did was create a bunch of space to break out. Um, we did some smart things this time. Um, the first of all, it had two different floors um, that, that we had that we could break out. Um, lots of common areas. Uh, this is pictures of uh, fajita night, um, you know, with, especially. with uh, everybody doing the fi- fix-ins and, um, and that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, we, uh, we, but then there were about, you know, four places to eat too. And, and I, I thought it was funny. Most of us, uh, most everybody liked to eat with everybody together. Uh, you know, so there was one big table where 11 of us could sit and you saw one of those pictures earlier today, but, um, but there were a couple of times where there was like two people would break off over here and just start talking about some stuff. And three people would go over here and talk about some stuff. And, um, I had something I wanted to just, I, I just got a bug one night and I was like, I think this was the second night, second night. Uh, yeah. I got a bug about one of the issues and I was like, let's fix this problem right now. And, <laughs> and then, then like, I think a lot of people kind of had that same passion yeah. and experience where like, it wasn't like huge problems. It was just stuff we're going to knock out, you know, since we got everybody together. Yeah. Absolutely. But it was really important to leave time and not over schedule our calendar to allow for that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that goes the same for, you know, the meals are a really good way, I think, to have some of that unstructured together time. I think certainly thinking about um, the fun in the evenings, we were relatively, in this case, unstructured. We did not have some kind of like event. We didn't, we didn't do yeah. any team building event. Any this kind time. of team building this time or anything. No I mean, goat were, yoga, no rope yeah. sports, no breakout room, no nothing. So Matt mentioned, Matthew mentioned goat yoga. We did do goat yoga uh, together yeah. as a team a little while back, but this is probably about as close to the unstructured time as you know, we got, you know, plan, uh, Matthew was probably, I think Matthew was asleep at this point. Uh, this was the late nighters. I, I, I was, I was to the left of you, dude. I was in this you room were. while you were doing uh, it. You yeah, I was, I was actually, were. but late night, you know, kind of hanging, having fun, uh, plenty of drinks going and, and catching up. I think all that stuff is very important. I mean, it's very important. And when you can, I think we've seen the benefit of when you can get together, um, you know, and focus on where, how's everybody doing? Let's tackle some important issues. Let's have some of that together time uh, and bonding. I mean, you can really have a successful retreat, which is a lot of fun. We've learned some things for sure. I mean, there are some things that I think over time, this is now our uh, third. Uh, third? I think it's our, no. Third or fourth, third or fourth, third. At least with the full team. You and I have done a number of these. I think this is third. Yeah, Um, this this is relatively new for us on our leadership team. That's yeah. not true. I lie. That's this is our fourth. It's our fourth. It's our fourth. Yeah, it's our fourth. Um, so it's really to be new. We learned some things. I think some of the things we have changed a bit are um, we've probably, to Matthew mentioned earlier, have been a little more intentional about maybe not stacking so many things in there together. Uh, that can feel your my temptation. Art. I think anybody's temptation is, oh, we're here together. Let's make it as impactful as possible. I think sometimes you end up scheduling too much. We did too many things back to back to back to back, um, and that just is hard for everybody. You get there, you're excited. The it's like coming to Vegas, right? Like, great, I'm so excited. You get there, and everyone's going, and then you get there and you're overwhelmed by it all. Like it's just too much, and you come back. And I think we saw that people were coming away with much longer to do lists out of it and you're like that just sucks the life out of you're like oh man i that's good but like i'm i just have so much more that got added to my list and that may happen anyway as you make some important decisions in your firm but we changed that up a bit kind of dial it back and i think also the other thing was we just felt like we were due for more of a working session right we historically these have been more right you yeah, and I, I mean, clients. talk well, about that. I mean, if you think about as you're like, this is our first year doing it, right? So four sessions. So we're about, you know, 14, 15 months in. 
Well, the first couple were level set. It's mm-hmm. lots, lots of talking heads like. This is what we're trying to do. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Blah, 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 blah. You know, lots of that. And, um, you know, if you stop and start these things, you end up doing a lot of level setting in a lot of these sessions for a lot of times. I mean, we had two full of the four that were like re-level setting. I mean, we did an acquisition, (laughs) a merger, you know, right right. after. We did mergers and acquisitions during this. And after the big merger, we had to re-level set, right? Like, so we had a level set at the beginning to kick off and then we had one working session, then we did another level set and then this is the next working session. I think we kind of, um, but I was really surprised at the last one we did on how little we were able to get accomplished. I really felt like the last one was the worst one we did, not this one, but the last one. And yeah, I agree. The worst one we did of like, we got through a lot of information and stuff like that, but it was like, man, we put a bunch on on people leaving as opposed to killing the roadblocks, you know? Yeah, we did. And again, part of that had also been, I guess to your point, like we beat each other, we beat ourselves up on this a good bit and in many ways, very deservingly. But also in that case too, we had just rolled out a whole new strategic plan. We've never done planning in the future and strategy. We're like, oh, we got another one more thing to get people leveled up. Yeah, we had a new on. strategic so, plan. We had a budget for the first well, time. First time. We never had a budget. So there was a lot of. So I guess maybe that's the takeaway. There is, uh, if the team, if you as the firm owner or maybe the tight leadership group haven't pushed stuff down yet to the, to your whoever you're bringing on the retreat with there probably will need to be some level setting. There's going to need to be some time there. And again, maybe some people like, like Juliet, when I talked to her, they went for like a week. So I'm, I don't know the whole agenda, but I'm guessing that they got more time to work their way through that while they were there. We've kind of done ours in these burst sprints where we feel like some short touch points throughout the year. And so some of those touch points had to be really heavy on like just getting everyone caught up and level set, which is I mean, just something I mean, to be aware of. Yeah. I mean, last session that we did like, it was like two hours on just the financial history of it, of acuity, yeah. like where people like understood the reason why we made some decisions over the last nine years together. Yeah. Right. That was kind of crazy. It is well, crazy, I'm, but it, it's a good, like, you, you know, you and I knew that inherently it was a great exercise. I mean, you went and spent time on your vacation building that, right. Because you're the dork that you are, but also because that stuff's interesting to us, but <clears throat> we'd already, you know, it's a good forcing function for you as leadership to go back and go, I got to clarify some messaging. I've got to, how do I, and I always feel this pressure when I go on these things of like, oh man, it's nice to know that these are close to every quarter to where we're going to have to bring back and be thoughtful and intentional because you're, you're looking around and for us, our 11 leadership team members, that's a significant pull out of the business, a significant cost. Um, how do you make that worthwhile? And that's, a, I like that. I like that pressure on me and on us to go, well, let's make this count. Let's make it do something. And every one of them is counted in their own way, but it does feel like we're getting better and better on this. Um, the other thing we noticed as we got feedback this time, we're figuring out little nuances of scheduling and timing. I think we're going to expand the timing a little bit. We may be We were kind of two days, but that two days really feels almost like one and a half days. If you're honest, we're going to do some things to probably get a little bit more time. Um, I think we're going to add, I think we got very resounding feedback of let's really be in the same space together. Um, Because even when we've done some stuff at resorts and we have some of the common space, when everybody kind of has their own separate room or building to go back to, you just lose some of that, that ability like we mentioned, that unstructured together time. I know that initially I had been, I wanted to be thoughtful to team members about, hey, maybe not everyone's like you and me. Like you and I, when we travel frequently, you know, we're like, hey, we'll just go ahead and share a room. I mean, hell, you and I have even had to share a bed before when it's at, you know, it's again, I'm not recommending that to everybody. It's not our favorite thing to do either. We're, you know, again, we're like brothers to where we can just kind of do that. Not everyone's like that. So I'm always trying to be thoughtful of other team members who were coming from those situations, but they came back very resounding. We're like, we all want to stay together. We all want to be together. If we're going to do this, let's be together. And so I think that's going to very much inform the way we do this going forward. And right. I, I think it'll, 
I, I think I hedged a little too much on let's give everyone their own separate room and make it more like a conference. I'm like, no, this is, this is us. This is our team. We should be together more. And so that was really, I'm oh, glad yeah. we're changing that up a bit. This time I would have said like the people that ended up, we like we had an extra room in our house uh, this time. And so one of the folks from the other house, you, you had sent a message out and the person that I thought would like want to leave and go be away from people. Like they were like, no, nah, I want to stay here. Like I thought, I thought they'd want to break, you know, so I thought that was interesting. I thought that really informs what we should do next time. So. It really does. It really does. Uh, we've added, we had some fun things. We added some swag this time. Like one of our, our great communicate our, our events communication manager put together some swag for us, even for our, you know, I mean, memorialize. I feel like there's an opportunity to celebrate too. Like you're there to celebrate. So let's have fun. If you make it a pure meeting, I mean, you'll get some things done, but like, it's a good time to celebrate and kind of be together and it doesn't mean it like it's a to be over the top fancy restaurants or crazy events. Like you can just do things like we had a little bit of some special swag around this one. Um, I mean, our house that we stayed in was certainly great. We had a great house. And I would recommend that if you're doing that, like, look, don't worry about it. Go a little over the top on the good house and get a good space. And boy, it seems to pay huge dividends when you've got like what Matthew described of lots of little spaces people can tuck into and like have their privacy if they need to, but they're also not in some separate hotel or building elsewhere. They're, they're, they're nearby and you can go and say, Hey, I want to go have lunch with you and talk about something for a bit, or we all want to be together and cook together or whatever it is. But um, again, I, I, I'm trying to even imagine when this wouldn't be useful. I guess if you're an early stage firm and you're just getting started, right? Yeah. Okay. You may not have that many team members to, really pull together. But if you're virtual, which I think most are, even if you're a small team, it's probably, can you imagine it not being worth spending at least one retreat together a year? Well, what some people are doing, they're kind of hacking it together and doing like, if they're like a five person firm, they're doing it and and then leveraging the vendors. Like if they're a zero firm, they're going to zero con mm-hmm. and just adding on a half day or going to QuickBooks Connect and adding on a half day. So if they're QuickBooks yeah. firm. So I think that's another nice way to do it. And if you think about AcuityCon, like we're able to get the vendors to come in and part of the big, like for your team members, part of the cool thing about conferences is meeting all the vendors face-to-face and really seeing the new stuff. And and um, if you're uh, smaller, you can kind of get that leverage at those. Uh, at ZeroCon and QuickBooks Connect are the two biggies, right? So for that. That's a, that's a really good kind of way to hack it together. I think there are, I mean, you may feel like that's ah, too expensive. And then again, you have to be thoughtful about those things. Or, you know, um, I actually, again, I'm going to keep mentioning Juliet. Um, Juliet's, for, as a, you know, her firm's a little smaller than Acuity's. Um, she had a huge portion of her team members who'd never flown on an airplane before, who'd oh, wow. never left Canada before. And so my very first, I I was like, wow, that's amazing. You gave them that opportunity to go try something new, see something new. I said, how many, how many of them did that give the bug to? Right. And she said, oh my gosh, a ton of them were like taking down notes while we were in the Dominican about like, okay, I want to come back here with my family. And so there's some really cool things. I think even if you're like, I I mean, we don't have that many team members. I don't think they've not stepped on a plane before done that, but she had a lot of them. And I think what a cool thing for a firm owner to give someone that experience, right? That they can take back in their personal lives and kind of build and grow upon. And I think there are ways to hack these together and not make them incredibly costly because again, the vendors are out there. They would love, they would probably love to have you and your whole team there. So check that out, try that out. Maybe they look at zero con because that's the probably that's the next big one coming up. Um, go do it, go have fun with it. I mean, we, we had fun with it, right? Look at us here. We had fun making weird faces. I won't, I won't push the, put the push up challenge on here. Uh, that's too long of a video. Just, just cause you, just cause you want it. Thanks. I know. I, I know. But you know, there's us, there's us having a good time together, doing a lot of stuff. Let's uh, move it from having a good time into rating our beers here. Um, I've got mine pulled up. Um, did it, can you see, see the ratings Matthew here? I can Did it switch. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was going to switch. This is the cream thickle, the cream sickle sour from Port Orleans Brewery. Check them out when you go to ZeroCon and we meet you up at ZeroCon. Thank you, Amanda, for hooking us up. Thank you, Andrew, uh, who's over with Port Orleans and involved with them. Um, this was super interesting. I'm definitely saving this for you, Matthew, because you like orange juice. You're a big orange juice guy. And 
it's supposed to be kind of like that creamsicle. It's more orange juice than creamsicle, but it's got a little bit of some creamsicle kind of flavor to it, which I'm a big fan of. Um, it's weird. It's unique. And I got, I'm giving them 4.25 just because look, look at this. I'm, I'm at the very bottom. I'm going to, you're going to kill it. I'm going to kill it. I finished all of it. Um, it is strange. It doesn't feel like beer. We'll see how it hits me here at an eight point at an eight percenter, you know? Um, now the problem here you've got is Donnie. I got Donnie's. So I'm unrateable here. So, but. Man, that's a good one. I'm going to go for 4.5 on this one. Because what did you say it was? Do you tell me what kind of style it's it was? A, it calls it the, the Kama Citra, which was oh, kind Kama of Citra. Yeah. I've actually made that one before. I've made that exact yeah. one because it's from Northern Brewers. Um, yeah. 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 You that's a great know. recipe. That's a great recipe. So, so he did it well. So I'm going to give him a 4.5 on that. And I'll, I'll, I'll bring you one uh, so you can taste it, man. So, I think the Kama Citra maybe, is if I, if I remember maybe right. It'll, that, it, it'll inspire you to get back into brewing. I have. I've got some downstairs in the basement. I got a keg down there. But now that I'm kegging, I'm not doing bottles as much. You got to come over here and drink with me. Um, oh my gosh, I got to go to Tennessee. You got to go way up here, but at least you get more beer. So I'll, I'll I'll brew some more for you. I'll actually I'll pour some into a growler for you and set it. However, firm owners, I'm talking to you. I'm pointing at you right through the podcast, right through the YouTube channel. Y'all need to do some time with your team, please do it. You'll, you'll love it. You'll love the experience of spending time with your team. I know we certainly do. Um, yeah, and, uh, if you, if you, well, if you ping us, we'll send you our agendas and stuff send like that. Send you the agenda, we'll send you all of it. Yeah. Info, Here's whatever, whatever can help, man. Cost structure, all those things, but that's what we're here to do. Honestly, that's what this podcast YouTube channel is about is, you know, we don't know a lot about many things at all. What we do, what we can do is at least tell you what weird things that we do inside of our firm. And if it helps you, great. If not, you can at least get some kicks and laugh about it. I was like, right? yeah, we can at least tell you all the mistakes we made. So Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a, a, we've got a long, That'd be a long, super long, long podcast. Um, but don't forget, hey, subscribe. We took a little bit of time off around some of the conferences. We are back in business and rolling and going. If you'd like to come on the podcast, if you have questions for us, if you'd like to sponsor, just send us beer. But just drop us a quick comment out there. We'd love to hear from you. So thanks for joining everyone. Subscribe. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.